What's up, Booty Brigade? You got Danita with BootyBounds.com excited to bring you another message in where women in weight loss are looking for answers. Looking for answers to cut fat, keep their curves, and really achieve long-term results. So it is time to look and feel your best. Excited to bring you a topic today that I hear a lot amongst my members and excited that when they had that aha moment and it really made sense for them, I wanted to make sure I brought it onto YouTube and helped any others that were struggling in weight loss and really wanted to help them in their journey. So let's get started. Today's topic is what and how to eat in a day. And hopefully this brings you any value. And if you have any questions about today, make sure to comment down below and like and subscribe if you find any value in this video so that way we can share it with women so we can really start finding transformations in this crazy toxic weight loss loop. So the first one is balancing your blood sugar. The second one is really learning how to make the correct percentages of your plate. And the last one is being consistent. I'm all about living your life I'm all about eating what you enjoy, still being social when you eat, and being able to really look and feel your best. So the first one I wanna go into is been really popular amongst the women I bring this to, um, teaching them all about the blood sugar and how when we stable the blood sugar, it can shrink our waist. That's the key takeaway that we wanna get here. Balancing your blood sugar can help shrink your waist. So let's dive into exactly how it can do that. Your body naturally wants to carry the blood sugar around 100. So we're gonna keep this nice, good kind of stable line right here that the blood sugar wants to stay at, okay? Just for your body to be at its optimal, best, efficient self. So what happens is when we just have, let's just take an example. Let's just say that we started off the day with a donut, sugar coated, whatever, chocolate or plain, doesn't matter, any type of donut. What it does immediately to our blood sugar is we start here and we spike the blood sugar up. Now we know that we're not supposed to, but when we're thinking calories in, calories out, you think how can it really be that bad? Well, let's see what it can actually do. What we do know is that the pancreas has to release insulin to be able to bring the blood sugar back down. And that's because your body wants to make sure that you're healthy. And so your body's working for you, right? To a point. And your body goes, wait a minute, you're not working for me. So how are we going to do this? So if we continue this up and down whiplash cycle back and forth, back and forth, and we're not balancing it out with protein, carbs, and fats, then what happens is your body gets used to this and it starts going into, if you've heard of insulin resistance, your body starts to protect its cells than it will your blood sugar. So what that means is if you keep doing this whiplash effect where you're just having a bunch of carbs and sugar and then you're crashing and then high, low, high, low, starving yourself, binge eating, et cetera, et cetera, what happens is the insulin tries to come up, but it only is as it's protecting your cells, there's going to be a lot of sugar still left in the blood. So where does the sugar in the blood go after that? Right here. Hence why you're going to start to really feel your stomach getting bigger, but it doesn't make sense because you feel like you're eating very small portions or small calories, but it seems like your body's not really changing. Well, this is the reason why your body is going to hold on to the weight um, if you're in starvation mode or if you're doing this whiplash effect here. So things that can happen when you're in this whiplash is cravings, irritable, super cranky, insulin resistance, diabetes, hypoglycemic, wearing out your pancreas, which can lead to bloating, digestive problems, inflammation, bowel issues, pancreatitis, and of course, storing adipose tissue in the waistline. So how do we really keep that midsection nice and small? As you see this little dotted line right here. Well, we no longer wanna make it a dotted line. We wanna make it a solid line because this is truly where you're going to get that small waist. And here's how. When you stable the blood sugar with protein, healthy protein, lean protein, those nuts, the seeds, the lentils, the legumes, the chicken, beans and rice, eggs, uh, anything like that, right? And that mixed with your healthy fats and your healthy carbohydrates, your complex carbohydrates with lots of fiber, you are doing this. And what that's doing is it's making it so all of this goes away. You're not storing the fat anymore. You're not causing yourself massive disease later. You're not giving yourself massive risks for uh, insulin resistance and this massive of issue that's been happening. So instead what it can do is it can actually provide nutrients through into our cells, a smaller waist, easier for weight loss, and non-crazy health risks. The list goes on. I have just listed a few just to make this video nice, short, and sweet for you, but at least you get an idea. So really the key takeaway, try to keep your blood sugar along this line so you can get a small waist. How to do that, instead of just having a bunch of pineapple in the morning, try to have pineapple with a protein shake. 
big difference, okay? All right, hopefully that helped. Let me know if you have any questions. Let's go to the next one. I'm again gonna keep this nice, short, and sweet for you. We can go into it a little bit deeper on another video, but I wanna make sure I cover it all. So percentages, right here I have a plate drawn out. You can see that the majority is going to be protein. So about 50 to 60% of your meal is going to be protein. Now, a lot of women might go, Danita, that's absolutely absurd. That sounds like a man. That sounds like I'm gonna get bulky. Absolutely not. Protein is not for a man. It is super essential that as you are going into weight loss, you're thinking about keeping your muscle mass. That's your metabolism. So the number one thing to actually feed your muscle is going to be this protein. And I can tell you, 99% of women that I speak to are not getting in protein in every one of their meals. And if they are, it's very small. Like it's probably like this tiny little sliver of protein instead. We do not want that. So make sure that you are getting enough protein in the day. It is a majority. The other part is your fiber carbs. You want that to also be the majority of your plate. This is going to be your vegetables or anything that's very fiber. Now they said, as our parents were raising us, they were like, just eat your vegetables on your plate. Well, did they tell you that your vegetables were gonna shrink your waist? Nobody told me that, but now I know. And that's how I really can keep a smaller waist is by having the fiber carbs, super important there. Um, cutting out, I mean, uh, fruits and things like that. I cut that out as much as possible. I stick to like berries first in the morning. Uh, but other than that, I just try to stick as most to fiber carbs as possible. And the rest is gonna be your fats. It is gonna be higher, higher in calories, so nine calories per gram versus these are only four calories per gram. I'm not much of a person that talks about calories. I believe more in supplementing nutrient type of food before you even think of a calorie, but that's my approach on it. So, um, and fats are just gonna be a, just a sliver. Um, again, making sure that all of these are healthy. And if they're not, we're gonna dive into how we can be consistent with that. So we'll go into that in just a moment um, of learning that. So again, learning how to do percentages. So if you were to think of protein, try to think of it being like 50, 60% of your meal, each one of your meals. Having your fats could be around maybe 20 to 30%. I eat most of my fats at night as I start to wean my carbs down at night. And in the morning, I have a little bit more carbs because I want more energy in the morning and I have less fat. So I kind of teeter those throughout the morning and night, your choice, but I do find that really helps shrink the waist. So that will be fats. As far as the fiber goes, again, keeping it very small. If you can stick to as much of this as vegetables, you can really go nuts on it. I mean, pretty much the fiber cancels out the carb. It really makes it so you can have a great amount. But if you are looking for more of your complex carbs, let's say your sweet potatoes and, and things like that, then you're it's somewhere around probably like 20 to 30%. And this really, on it, I say probably because it depends on your age. If you are a little bit older, you're gonna wanna hit more to probably about 10 to 20% because your body is slowing down the metabolism. Yes, you can speed it up with muscle mass, but remember that age is against you and, and we're losing three to 5% of our muscle mass every decade. Try to have about 10, 20% each meal of your carbohydrate as you get older. If you're a little bit younger, you can get away with about 20 to 30%. So hopefully that helps. If you have any questions, let me know. This is just a generic. This isn't specifically to you if you've got something that's obviously a health risk or something that's going on in your life that I don't know about. This is a generic overview just to kind of help out if you have any questions. The next one, the last and best of all the games, I hear this question a lot, Danita, how can I be consistent? Now we know that's where the results are gonna be, is the consistency. And so I love this one. It really is great. I can help women get more consistent. And the first thing is you have to love it. All right, so if somebody is giving you a meal plan in which you're not loving, I definitely think there's no way you're gonna stick to it, right? So I focus more on being 1% better than what you were yesterday. Or it can be progression over perfection. Focusing on just those small, tiny stages of growth is really going to be the journey that's gonna get you that consistency. To me, it just doesn't happen overnight. Most clients aren't. For you, maybe it works, but I'm just speaking on average terms here. So falling in love with your health journey is gonna be number one. Number two is keep it simple. I had a client come up recently and goes, Danita, I just can't seem to get consistent with my workouts or meal prepping. And she goes, it's just because I'm not a morning person. And I go, well, fancy that. I'm not a morning person either, actually. I'm definitely more of a night person. And so what's interesting is she's been trying to fit herself in a square square hole and she's been a circle and it's just not fitting, right? So really the, the key takeaway here is don't make yourself something that you're not. If you're a night person, make the night work for you. It doesn't matter. Everybody's kind of has their own little ways that like, oh, a workout at morning is more efficient and effective. Well, you know, I work out at night and I still feel like I'm efficient and effective. So make it work for you. Don't go 
into these um, hypes and things if it's if it's not meant for you. Having a healthy lifestyle is very flexible to every single person. I think just as much as there is as a result or like a positive journey is as many people as there are in the world. So there's hundreds of thousands of different ways there can be success in your particular journey. So just keep that in mind. There's not just one way. The other one is finding sustainability. I have a lot of members that come up to me and say, Denise, I've been on keto. It didn't work for me. I tried HCG so shots. It didn't work for me. I tried paleo. I tried all these. And what happens is when we get ourselves into like a restrictive meal plan where we have to completely cut out carbohydrates, for example, we know that that's not sustainable the rest of our life. So what it's caused women to do is have a very unhealthy relationship with their macros. They don't understand really which foods are healthy for them. And they start leaning towards a very high saturated fatty diet thinking that cheese is okay for them. And so as I re-educate them and show them more of the balancing of the blood sugar, the percentages, and following a way that you can really love it and start to learn this and it's a journey for you, I see way more results that are long-term. And that is the key takeaway. We want long-term results to really look and feel our best. And that hope that I put back into women's lives is the reason why I do this. It really gives me so much motivation to hear that word, to know that you're ready to follow something that makes you feel fueled and strong and taking your power back, to be honest. So finding something that's sustainable, making it work for you. Success can be in multiple different ways. Thanks you guys for coming in. Hopefully this left you with some amazing value. If you do have any other questions um, or if you want to join our 10 to 15 minute day workouts, make sure to join the Booty Bands and Barbells app or you can just click the link below where there's meal plans, there's challenges, there's an entire community and you're always getting new, fresh, daily workouts all the time to keep you accountable and motivated. So lots of love. You guys have an amazing rest of your day and I hope to see you in the group and talk to you soon. Bye.